Hi everybody, welcome back to another C++ lesson. Today we're going to be talking about something called abstract classes, which is not that complicated. All they are is sort of a way of uh, designating a parent class or a base class as just that, just a base class, and you're never actually going to uh, create an object of the base class, just pointers to point to the children using polymorphism. So let me demonstrate this in an example. And I'm actually going to use the same example as we did in the last video, though I'm not going to uh, fledge it all out quite as much. Okay, so we had our shape class, uh, which has one virtual method, and uh, then we have rectangle, which inherits from that. Um, and rectangle should have a width and a height, but I'm not going to type it all out. Uh, I'll just do that. this. The area of the rectangle is calculated. Okay, so it's not really returning anything, so I suppose I should make it void. But, I mean, you get the point. The point is just sort of to set up uh, some some inheritance and in polymorphism here. So let me quickly write out the circle one. So again, what we're doing here is we're setting this up so that, um, right, you might want to make a rectangle, okay, and you might want to make a circle, right? That's the point of making these uh, classes. But the thing is, you would never want to make a shape, right? right? That doesn't make sense. Uh, you wouldn't want to call calculate area in the shape you know from a shape object because that doesn't make sense you don't know what kind of shape it is it's not even you can't even really figure out what a shape looks like because it could be any number of shapes we're really just it's just an abstract idea right that's where the name for this comes from it's just an abstract idea that we're using to sort of uh, be the parent of the more specific rectangle and circle classes uh, and then they inherit from shape, and the whole reason we're doing this is so we can make shape pointers, right? Shape pointers are not the same as shape objects, by the way. Um, well, you should know that, but shape pointers, and then the pointer could point to a rectangle or a circle. Um, but we would never want to make a shape, just, just a shape object. We wouldn't want to do this. Don't want. Okay, but the way that we... Uh, sort of formally demonstrate this both to the compiler and to anybody who is reading the code is uh, uh, you take one of your methods in in your base class that you want to make abstract that you never want to actually make a object or an instance of uh, and you take one of the methods typically and this can be at least one or more than one uh, typically a virtual one and all you do is after your little declaration in the class you type equals zero so this is a little weird but um, we basically take the uh, function and sort of set it equal to zero or you could think about it as maybe setting it equal to null uh, but yeah that's all there is and then you don't even need to uh, have an empty function you don't need to do curly brackets or anything like that the compiler just sees this and says okay this virtual function is just intended to be a base sort of function and then I'll get implementation for it in the other classes. Uh, but what this also indicates to the compiler is it, it tells the compiler if the coder ever tries to make an instance of the shape class, not a shape pointer, you can still make shape pointers, but if you ever try to make an instance of the shape class, then the compiler will give you an error and you won't be able to do it. So let me go ahead and uh, compile this so we can see uh, that in action. Right, so, okay, I was expecting to get a couple errors, but not that many. Looks like a couple typos. Sorry, let me compile again. Right, okay, so here we go. This is exactly what I wanted. Uh, it says we cannot declare variable s, so that's down here when I'm saying shape s. Uh, we cannot declare that uh, to be of abstract type shape, right? Because shape is an abstract class, and we've done that by setting one of the functions equal to zero. By the way, when you do this, this function is apparently called a pure function. I just I just learned that doing a little background research for this video, but it's called a pure function. I don't really know 
you know when that's going to come up at the dinner table conversation but you know you can you can tell people that you learned about pure functions uh, as well as abstract classes if you want but yeah so that's that's pretty much the whole the whole thing about abstract classes uh, the only other thing that I want to uh, sort of emphasize is that this doesn't stop you from being able to uh, have other functions right just normal functions that maybe you know do something like this and then remember those get inherited in your inheritance and so then I mean just remember that shape still acts like a normal class even though it's abstract and you can't make a uh, a instance of this so rectangle from a rectangle object you could still call the do something method because it's inherited from the shape class even though shape is abstract. You still couldn't make an instance of the shape class, but okay, I think I'm repeating myself a little bit too much. Uh, one more thing is that shape could actually inherit from another class if you had, I don't know, maybe like an object class or something. You gotta get really abstract here. Uh, but you could have shape inherit from uh, the object class. An object could even be an abstract class, and shape could inherit from it. It just would mean that you couldn't make an object, uh, uh, you couldn't make an object object, or you you couldn't make a shape object. You couldn't make an object until well, you couldn't make an instance of a class. I should say that you couldn't make an instance until you get down to the rectangle or the circle classes. So that's sort of just a um, aside, not really the point of abstract classes. But I'm just saying, remember that an abstract class still does. Uh, sort of have the same properties of a normal class. It's just you can't um, make an instance of it. Okay, that's it for abstract classes. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks.